Hello everyone, my name is Ramba Mamba, back at it with another video. In this episode, we will go over how to make a flashbang effect in Unity, similar to this. Where time slows down and then you cannot see and uh, ear piercing noise occurs. So this video was actually recommended and uh, it was actually given to me by the a person named Chandler Bing from our Discord server. So if you would like to get a shout out in the in future videos or you would like to uh, give me video ideas, let me know and join the Discord server in the description box. Next, in this video, I will be using the mini first person controller by Vitafet. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it will be uh, how I will start this video. So thank you to Vitafet and check this uh, controller out it's really nice next uh, by Mippies Mippies uh, had an answer on Stack Overflow on how to make a canvas white and reduce the alpha of it slowly which is really helpful to uh, to this tutorial we will be using some of that code to make it so that our screen becomes white during the flashbang so thank you to Mippies go check out his answer his in-depth answer lastly in this video, we're going to be needing the URP, Universal Render Pipeline, in our Unity, in Unity, because uh, then we can use post processing. I'll not be going over how to install it or how to add URP to your project, but this video by YouGurus uh, really quickly explains it in two minutes. The first two minutes quickly explains it. So if you do not have URP already in your project, Go check out this firsthand so you can get the post processing materials. So let's get started. So, right now, I have a new project which is already converted to URP with a basic map and our FPS controller. So, there's four parts to a good flashbang we need to slow down time, we need to have a tunneling effect, we need to make the screen white, and we need to have a, a screechy sound effect. So, let's get started by making the tunneling effect and we can do this using post processing so with our project already converted to URP we can right click in the hierarchy and create a new volume a new global volume and inside of the volume we can create a new profile and then we can add an override and uh, we'll select post processing and then we'll look for vignette so we'll just check all of these boxes so that we can control them and i'll set the intensity to one and the smoothness to one so right now it seems like you can't see anything but don't worry we'll change this and everything will be fine we'll set the weight of our volume to zero and now through script when we get the flashbang we can kind of increase it and go like this and then decrease it again during, after the flashbang is over. So right now we'll set the weight of it to zero and all of these settings. Now let's go into our camera of our first person controller and let's make sure that the inside of the rendering folder of our camera that post processing is selected so that when we're actually running the script through the player's camera we'll be able to, to see the vignette actually happen. So now that we have the tunneling effect ready, we can get started by making the white screen. So under our player, so if I select our first person controller, I right click and create a new UI and then I'll select canvas. I'll add a, I'll add a canvas group and then I'll set the alpha of this to zero and deselect interactable and blocks raycast. So what this will do is that with the alpha, we will be able to control how bright our light is. And if we saw from the detailed explanation from Meepy's answer in Stack Overflow, the answer was that using this alpha, we can control this from script to increase and then decrease, similar to how we did the vignette. So if I select on the canvas again, I can right click, UI, and then I will create a panel. So this panel, I'll set it to 100% white. So for color, it will be white. And 
all of these settings will be at the max and the see-through value will be also at the max make sure it's at the max and now if I go back into my canvas I can increase the alpha and then the white the whiteness appears so right now we'll set it to zero and we'll change it through script now let's add our sound so I actually already have a sound that I downloaded off the internet so what you can do is that you can go into your assets folder right click and then import new asset and then you can open up that flashbang sound so this was my flashbang sound so I'll double click on it and now it's here but how will I play it so you need to create an audio source this is how you can play it from script so I'll select my player once again right click and create a audio and I'll create an audio source so now we can uh, with the audio source selected we can drag our flashbang effect into the audio clip slot and now we can actually play this audio source value from script I'll deselect play on awake since we want to play it from script and make sure that loop is also not selected and over here I'll actually reduce some of these values this is what the sound chart looks like I'll reduce some of these values because the sound in this clip is really too long so I'll reduce some of the values all the way to zero so that looks good you do not have to do this but that looks good to me and I'll rename this audio source to something like SFX now we can get started by writing our script so I'll select our player and add a new script and I'll call it something like flashbang effect and then let's double click on it to open it up in Visual Studios so Visual Studios has loaded and because in this video we will be using URP and post-processing and we'll be trying to control it from script let's add at the very top using unity engine dot rendering so now we can use some of the post-processing components such as the, vo the volume that we made so let's make a, a reference to that so public volume and I'll call it something like volume with a lowercase v next let's make a reference to the canvas group that we made and this is how we will control the whiteness on our screen so we can do public canvas group and we'll call it something like alpha controller lastly let's make a reference to our sound so public audio source oops audio source and I'll call it something like bang now let's make a, a private bool so that we can keep track of whether the flashbang is on or off so private bool on is equal to false so this is how we'll keep track if the flashbang is on or off now in void update, let's check if the user presses a button to trigger the flashbang. So if input dot get key down and then key code oops key code dot p for example, then we want to trigger our flashbang effect. So let's make a new function under void update called void flashbang. And if we press the button P, then we'll trigger this flashbang effect. Later, you can make it so that if a grenade is within the distance of, of certain distance, then this will be triggered. But we'll not be covering that in this video. We'll just be making the, the visual effect of the flashbang. So if someone presses P, we start the flashbang. And in the flashbang, we first want to get our volume and we want to we wanna make it so that the vignette is turned on so I'll select volume and, I'll, and we'll change the weight value of it so volume dot get component and we need to get the volume component of it 
Next, we can get the weight com weight of it, and then we can set it to 1. So now the tunneling effect will happen, and we can simply set our bool on to true, because our flashbang is happening now. We can start our sound using bang.play. And then we can make our screen white using alpha controller. Alpha controller dot alpha, and we can set it to one, which is the max. Now in void update, we want to check if on is true, then we want to start reducing all of these values. We want to reduce the amount of volume we have. We want to reduce how white it is slowly over time. So in void update, we can simply check if on is equal to true. And remember, we use the double equals in this scenario compared to the equals we used before because we're trying to compare two values, not set something. So if on is equal to, to, to uh, true, we want to first slow down time. So time dot time scale is equal to 0 0.05 f oops 0 0.05 f then we can get our alpha controller and we can slowly reduce it over time so alpha controller dot alpha is equal to alpha controller dot alpha minus time dot delta time times two so it'll reduce by the scale of time times it by two and then we can get our volume and also subtract it by two so volume dot get component volume dot weight dot weight is equal to itself minus time dot delta time times two time dot delta time times two perfect and now we can simply check if it is less than zero so if we have already reached the lowest amount of whiteness and the lowest amount of uh, volume then we can set everything back to zero and we can set on to false so if Alpha controller dot alpha is less than equal to zero, then we simply want to get our volume and set it to zero. So volume dot get component volume dot weight is equal to zero and then alpha controller dot alpha is equal to zero and then we can set our time back to zero or time scale back to one time dot time scale is equal to one and then on is equal to false meaning our flashbang has finished on is equal to false Perfect. So now we check if we press P and then we set all of our volume and all of our lights and everything, all their effects on, and then we slowly reduce them. And then when they hit zero, then we set them back to what they were supposed to be and we stop the flashbang. So let's save this script, go back into Unity. And if I select our player, we can simply drag in the values of volume, alpha controller, and bang. So for volume, I'll drag in global volume. For bang, I'll drop in I'll, I'll drag in our SFX. And for our alpha controller, I'll dra I'll drag in our canvas since that's where our alpha controller was in. So now if we hit play, and if I press the button P, let me look up.
the effect plays perfectly. And we can keep on playing it over and over with P. And of course, you can tweak these values, and you can even uh, you can even make it so that this is triggered when a grenade lands near you. So let's stop this. Uh, let's save this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this found you helpful in making a flashbang effect. If you found this helpful, please leave a like down below and comment and also subscribe because it helps me out. And we we're so close to 100 subscribers and it would make my dream come true if we can reach 100 subscribers one day. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy.